So let's have a look at contract costs then. So contract costs can basically be split up into the cost that you get when you try to obtain a contract and the cost that you get when you're actually fulfilling the contract. Now both of them really you should put to the SFP, you should capitalise them. But always make sure as well that these costs aren't uh, under a different standard. Okay, so um, make sure they're not under uh, PPE or whatever it might be. Okay, so obtaining the contracts, cost for obtaining them, these must be incremental costs. So costs that would not have been incurred had that individual contract not been obtained. So, you know, an, a proper extra cost for getting that contract. For example, sales commission. That wouldn't have been paid unless you got the contract. Okay. Um, so these get shown separately as well. All right. Um, um, because they're recoverable from the, uh, the contract from your customer, then you capitalize them. Unless you're going to amortize them away for less than a year, in which case you don't have to bother. So let's have a look at an example then. So remember here, we're looking at cost of obtaining the contract. So you do some due diligence on a customer. You make some travel costs to deliver the proposal to a customer. And then finally, sales commission on getting the contract. So these are costs of obtaining the contract, doing the due diligence on them. Are they recoverable? Are they incremental costs? Not really. Those you would expense because these, um, these would have been incurred whether you won or whether you didn't win. So it wasn't the contract that specifically caused these. It wasn't the winning of the contract. So they're not necessarily recoverable and uh, they would have been have to have been paid anyway. Travel cost to deliver the proposal. Very similar. Expense them because these would have been incurred whether or not the tender was won or not. What about sales commission? Well, those you can capitalise. These are recognised as an asset because they're incremental costs of obtaining the contract. The company expects to recover these through future sales, doesn't it? Okay, and so that you would capitalise. So, now let's have a look at cost of fulfilling the contract. And remember what I said, it must fall within the scope of IFS 15. Can't be... IS2 inventories or IS16 PPE or IS38 uh, intangible assets, okay? And also the cost must relate directly to the contract. We're fulfilling it, so it must be for that contract. And also it must enhance the resources that you're going to use to satisfy your promises, okay? And again, they must be expected to be recovered. And because they are, then they can be capitalised. So let's again have a look at some examples. Direct labour, allocated overheads, and general costs not chargeable to that specific customer. Well, direct labour on that particular contract, then it relates directly to it. It's going to enhance the resource, so, you know, the, the resource that we use to sell, so you capitalise it. Again, allocated cost to it, the same thing. But general costs, like admin costs, that are not explicitly chargeable to the customer, well, you would just expense those. What about wasted materials and what about past performance costs? So wasted materials or wasted labour or other resources that are not reflected in the price of the contract, those can't be capitalised, they must be expensed. Also costs related to satisfied, to, to uh, part partially satisfied or past performance, they also must be expensed.